Good evening. So we're back um, with another uh, very nice presentation coming from Alexandre Cousin. He is from Fancy Construction France. Uh, we from the from the Netherlands know this Fancy when driving on the highway to the southern France. You see the, the sign everywhere, and it's the fifth largest uh, construction company in the world, uh, and it's quite impressive. And Alex Alexandre is actually running an internal computational design uh, group. Uh, within the company, uh, which is doing the generative design for Fanchi, uh, with a lot of cool developments. Alexander, nice that you're here this evening and found the time. And, yeah, good uh, evening. Good you're here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please uh, tell us your story. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you uh, for uh, listening, uh, listening to me at UCode. Um, what I'm going to share today, uh, it's a bit of generative design at Vinci Construction. Uh, so we are working uh, since uh, uh, four years now uh, on this topic. So I can share some uh, elements we have learned and uh, what we are working on uh, about generative design. Okay, so let me introduce myself first. So my name is, uh, so as you said, Alexandre Cousin. I'm working uh, at uh, Vinci Construction since uh, six years now. Uh, I'm from civil engineering first. And I was a method, so kind of logistic engineer, foresight uh, before to uh, work on digital projects and generative design. So today, what I can share with you, it's a, a talk about generative design. And so for today, uh, we're going to discuss about what is parametric design, what is generative design. So I guess uh, a lot of you know already what is it, but uh, we can have a, a short focus uh, on how it works and what are the, the use cases uh, we have inside uh, Vinci and uh, how we can deploy generative design uh, with the help of, uh, of Vitor. So let's go. Um, first of all, so what is generative uh, parametric, sorry, design? Because if I have to talk about generative, I should start by parametric design. Um, if I simplify and if we come back uh, about uh, drawings in uh, AEC, uh, we start by uh, sketching, so just some uh, line to define a buildings, a bridge, or other uh, uh, different uh, uh, construction. Then we have uh, we had the, the revolution of uh, the computer uh, aided design with uh, a lot of different software, um, many known uh, AutoCAD or other software like that. So it was already a big progress, but we were still uh, drawings. Uh, line on the plan finally, but uh, in the in the computer. And um, at the end, uh, what appears and what is really interesting now, uh, it's for uh, the parametric design. It's just the, the a method of working, and um, the opportunity uh, comes from the fact that now we are leaving the drawings for modeling. And so of course, uh, now we are uh, using model, uh, which means that we have object inside the model with properties. And so uh, we can um, use these properties uh, to work with and, uh, and do generative design. So on my uh, little example, uh, I have some random shape in the middle of the screen. And just around that, I have a, a, a create a bounding box, which is parameterized to uh, turn around the, the random shape. And so what we see there, that's that we can reparameterize the bounding box, meaning that uh, if I change the orientation, the bounding box will be recalculated. So uh, we have a parameterized model, and so it's way easy uh, to change the model and make it evolve. So this is the this simple use case, a uh, simple example. But uh, if we uh, have a look on what it could look uh, on a real project, like uh, here we have a, a bridge, a, a bowstring bridge. Uh, parametric design uh, um, allow us to, um, when we are uh, in the early stage, have a look about architecture, technical aspect, structural aspect, and have an idea about how it works uh, 
if I change this part of my bridge, how will be the, the, uh, the consequences? Um, what will be the consequences on the structural aspect? So of course, it's uh, already evolved parametric design. We are not able to uh, do this on all the software. Here, uh, I guess most of you have recognized uh, the software Rhino and Grasshopper. Um, and so if we leave generative, uh, parametric design to go through uh, generative design, uh, we can, the idea is to use the, the, the model, so the parametric model, uh, and add some intelligence or kind of intelligence which with algorithm. And the idea is it's, um, if I would optimize my model, so optimize uh, can be really different uh, uh, um, uh, proposition. So uh, we have to define what is optimized. Uh, I can reparameterize my model by hand. So trying a lot of different configuration or I can um, parameterize my uh, model uh, and ask him to be kind of intelligent, meaning that I had, I had algorithms to focus on one goal or uh, on one constraint. And so here uh, on my small box, uh, what I want to achieve is to find the orientation of the box, which will minimize uh, the volume of, of my box. And so if I had to do this by hand, of course, it will be uh, a pretty long process. Uh, and if we have this kind of problematics in civil engineer, uh, it could be really, really long process. So this is generative design, use a model, which is parametric and then add some intelligence inside with an uh, algorithm, uh, generative model, or AI, whatever. And so why, why generative design help us um, it, uh, for our everyday works? So it helps us because as a, um, a civil uh, engineer, um, we are uh, with different constraints when we have to uh, design uh, uh, buildings or a bridge or a tunnel or anything. So there is really short deadline, uh, really tight deadline to um, to consider. And we have most of the time uh, changing input data. And so what happened is that we do a first proposition, then the data change. Uh, we have to do another proposition and then the, the data change again, but the, the deadline is closer and closer. So this kind of model help us to uh, uh, find more than good solution, but dif differentiating solutions. Because most of the time when we do a proposition, we have a good solution, but, but we don't uh, have the best solution. So this is uh, a, a big benefit for us to use a generative design. Uh, it helps us to find a, 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 yet find an optimal performance to explore a whole set of data, to pick the best uh, uh, solutions. Um, there is a, um, an aspect of uh, risk management, meaning that uh, when the, of course, the, the model is uh, well parameterized, uh, we can uh, decrease the risk um, and limit the, the human errors. And uh, it's a high and secure uh, return of investment. Uh, if you focus on the good uh, use case, you can save a lot of time and find a, a very good or maybe the best solution uh, you could propose for an offer, a buildings, a bridge. And so uh, if I left my uh, small uh, red box to focus on uh, what is generative design applied in a, a, a real project, it, it, it will look like, like that. Uh, so this is another example. Here we are, we change um, of, uh, of uh, uh, construction. It's a road or uh, train line uh, construction. So we have here uh, in white um, an area where we can um, define our, our road. And so which the, the small spaghetti, <laughs> uh, middle of the screen and the black, uh, the black line is uh, the track. So the road or the, the train line uh, we could have. And so the, the goal here is to optimize uh, the track, optimize the path of our road or our uh, train line. Uh, meaning that th there is a lot of different uh, constraints here. Uh, we have uh, the geometrical aspect of the road that there is a, 
uh, radius, slope, and uh, all the different constraints we know. Uh, there is uh, uh, constraints about uh, the, the, the ground and uh, um, the, the environmental effects. So we have some, some uh, red, pink um, elements here on the screen uh, where it is uh, an environmental zone that we have to respect. And so uh, in here, there is a lot of different constraints. So uh, we would like to optimize by uh, the price of the solution. We would like to optimize uh, the environmental impact of the solution. And we would like to uh, improve, because we have the opportunity of that, uh, the, the technical impact and the technical aspect of the project. And so this is uh, an example of how generative design could be used uh, for civil engineering. It could be uh, on this small example, kind of simple because uh, it's small. It's a small part of the of the road. It's uh, just some kilometers. But when you have a really big construction to do, like uh, uh, many uh, hundreds of uh, of uh, kilometers, it's said to be really inter interesting. Sorry, because during the night you just. Uh, ask for the software to study a lot of different uh, solutions. And during the night, uh, 12 hours of calculation, you have more than uh, 70,000 of different solutions. And so some of them would be really bad or random. And some of them could be really good, maybe uh, the best one. So um, how does works uh, generative design? Uh, if we do a short focus, uh, the ID be behind the generative design, it's that uh, there is so the generate uh, first uh, a first solution, uh, then a solution will be evaluate, and then uh, we try to make the solution evolve. Uh, and so the three different steps: uh, generate, evaluate, evolve, make uh, the possibility to create generative design, and generative design as a process. So uh, it won't change, uh, it, it won't replace all the engineers we are, uh, but it, will, it could change the way we are working. So it's, the process is a bit different. Um, here, uh, we have to see the, the computer as uh, an helps. Um, it helps us uh, to find the best solution. So first of all, the designer have to define the concept, uh, the constraints and the goals. So the constraints of my broad example could be um, the different uh, um, uh, environmental zone we have, uh, an area we have on the track. Uh, and the goals could be to minimize the, the environmental impact. So this is uh, just an example, but it works. Then you ask uh, to your uh, software to do the job, uh, generate a lot of different solutions and converge course, because the idea is to find uh, the best one, not, uh, not just to explore uh, randomly the, the different solution. And at the end, you have to explore by yourself, uh, because when you have uh, 70,000 of different solutions, um, there is a lot of data uh, to, to explore. And then uh, this is the, let's say, classical engineering process, like detail integration with the, with the project. So this is the generative design process. And if we have a look on how we can uh, do the evaluation. So um, basically what we have to do is to um, traduct uh, the, 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 the problem, the issue we have, or the, the, the design issue we have on mathematics. So we have to uh, define the parameters. We could be discrete, continuous. Uh, we can have permutation between the parameters. And we have to define our objective, which most of the time it's to minimize, uh, minimize, sorry, in the other sense, minimize or, or maximize uh, a value. Like I would like to minimize the environmental impact or I would like to uh, maximize uh, the quantity of uh, this element of the project. And we have to, to define the constraints, uh, as we say, so environmental impact uh, or the environmental area for us or just the, 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 the slope or the radius of a road could be a constraint, a geometrical constraint that we have to, to, to work with. And then um, we can do the evaluation. So what, what is interesting about evaluation um, is that we, you can have uh, 
simple and single evaluation, or you can have a multi-objective um, evaluation. If you have just one goal, one um, uh, parameters to evaluate, uh, the best solution will be really fine to, to really simple, sorry, to find. The best solution will be, uh, let's say we, we reduce the price. Uh, so the, the best solution will be the solution uh, with the lower price, of course. But on the opposite, if you have to compose with pricing and environmental impact, then you have two uh, parameters to optimize. And then you will have, uh, like it is on my screen, you will have a lot of different solution um, on your solution uh, plan. And uh, you will have appear uh, a pyth of uh, where there is a non-dominated solution, which means that all the different solutions we have uh, along the, the, the blue the blue line, black one maybe, <laughs> blue line, uh, will be different and very interesting solution. Meaning that, for example, uh, a solution which is very, very uh, expensive, let's say this one, uh, the environmental impact, for example, uh, will be really low, so expensive but low impact on environment. And on the opposite, you could have a very uh, bad solution about uh, environment impact, so really high environment impact, but really uh, low budget solution. And so uh, when you have a lot of different solutions like that, you just have to explore and make a decision or just uh, present different solutions to your clients, and uh, uh, it helps a lot. About um, the evolution, uh, the last step. So there is many ways to do it. Uh, um, the, the, let's say traditional uh, way to make the evolution are uh, to use the evolutionary algorithm. Uh, of course, you can use AI or just a random uh, algorithm. There is plenty of way to do it. Uh, but what is interesting with the evolutionary uh, algorithm is that they are inspired from evolution or just from nature, if we focus on a genetic algorithm, uh, the idea would be to uh, generate different solutions. Like for my road, I'm testing different, let's say, random solution. And after maybe 100 solutions, I start to have really bad solution, random solution, or let's say average solution, and maybe some one or two good solution or not as bad solution as the other. And so with this first uh, interesting solution, good solution, I can uh, focus around these properties of my solution and create new solution inspired from which was already a good solution. And so it's uh, directly coming from uh, evolution and yeah, uh, kind of fun and uh, sometimes really efficient uh, way of uh, doing uh, generative design. Okay, so this is how it works. And uh, now what are the use cases? Um, in the industries, there is uh, manufacturing when, when they have a lot of different use cases uh, about generative design, like uh, in aerospace, uh, automotive, or uh, just uh, technical wearing design. And in AEC, so what is important for us today, uh, there is some stuff to do too. About manufacturing, so there is Many uh, examples about generative design. Um, Autodesk make a real, uh, really good uh, animation about that. Uh, here, what we can observe, it's a uh, topology optimization. optimization. Uh, it's a bit different about uh, evolving, but the idea is the same. Uh, I start first to try first solution, and then um, um, try to optimize uh, step by step my process to find uh, one of best solution. And then there is uh, AEC, so uh, in architecture, there is a lot of different um, um, generative design about uh, housing layout, or maybe some of you guys know SpaceMaker, about uh, how to optimize uh, a project, about how you put uh, different buildings, how you uh, optimize the superficy of uh, the project. And about engineering, um, there is a lot of stuff to do. Um, and we are doing uh, some stuff. You guys doing are doing some stuff. I've seen a, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, example today. And so we are working on geometric uh, rationalization. There is uh, a lot of uh, 
uh, optimization to do on site on construction site then you can have when you have uh, a geometric model you can have structural aspect it's something we have seen of my bridge uh, we have uh, deformation um, and uh, um, effort uh, inside the bridge and at the end you can if you have more data uh, aggregate around a model a lot of different data and so today uh, we are working on the custom software development interoperability and data analysis and deployment of uh, this kind of solution uh, our team so um, it's not a big team we are working with uh, we are working with a civil engineer which are now developers and a structural engineer a data scientist of course and web developer uh, to make the, the deployment and beyond generative design in fact there is a, a lot of a subject to explore about AI, about web development, about uh, engineering development, how we can find use cases inside our uh, business. And about use cases, um, Vinci, is, uh, uh, as you say, with her, a really big company with a lot of different specialty, uh, like uh, building, bridges, uh, pipeline, and so on. And so there is plenty of use cases uh, everywhere we look uh, around, uh, around generative design. And some examples. Um, uh, here uh, about formworks, um, there is uh, a Vinci guy working on uh, creating uh, formworks, and so we we can consider the uh, the loads and the different uh, solution they have to find the best disposition uh, to have the uh, something which is not too expensive and uh, we, something which is uh, respectful about uh, environment. So one of example would be to optimize. Uh, the wood and aluminium uh, frameworks we, we, we use on site. Uh, another example would be to uh, work on the uh, onshore pipelines. Uh, onshore pipelines is a, a, a really specific industry. They have a precise uh, um, uh, rules about how to position the, the pipelines. And so uh, the idea is to find the best uh, um, uh, placement um, of, of the pipeline. And so you can use generative design to find how uh, should be the, the, the pipeline. Um, I'm going to just uh, do jump some use case because uh, I'm a bit short about time and I, I really would like to take time to present the last, uh, the last example. Um, another example is uh, about how to optimize a car park uh, for uh, find the uh, many as possible as a, a place inside the car park. Uh, it's always a, a problem inside the engineering because we have all, we missed we missed always one place. Uh, so this is one of the use cases. And then uh, now about the deployment of our use case, we are working with uh, with Victor, uh, of course, for deploying this kind of tools inside and across the group. So. I will be really fast about Victor. Um, I guess many of you know already the solution, so I'll be uh, uh, really fast about that. And I do just a, a focus uh, about um, an interesting uh, uh, application we have created with uh, with Victor. It helps us to to win a lot of time. Uh, and so sorry, the interface is uh, in French. Um, but the idea here is to do the design of a crane foundation. So this is a pipeline in, uh, in nine steps, and um, uh, it's uh, destined to um, the, the structural engineer. So they used uh, this software to do the, the crane foundation uh, design and optimization. And so the, during, during the nine steps, they will start by um, creating the good geometry, then uh, to uh, add the material, the geology, uh, some uh, rules about how we would like to construct. Uh, they will add at the the load um, of on the soft on the on the crane. Yep, we don't want to. Yeah, sorry guys. And at the end, because what is interesting, it's at the end. Uh, we can generate. We don't want to. Oops. Okay. Uh, we can create uh, every. Um, important element for uh, construction site, which means uh, the node calculation. We can create the plan, uh, the formwork plan, and the reinforcement plan. And uh, uh, we can uh, give all of that to the engineer. So there is no black box effect because uh, we are using traditional software. 
our engineers are not lost because they are using uh, exactly the same environment that they, they will be using uh, on their own, meaning that uh, they have a, a word for editing the calculation notes. They will have the uh, Autodesk robot model to check the calculation. They will have uh, the Excel spreadsheet just to check some, uh, uh, some calculation. And they will have a DWG and PDF uh, document at the end for uh, the plan. So um, Victor helps us a lot for uh, the deployment. Before it was uh, yeah, quite complicated to create and uh, deploy the, the, the different application. Create was OK, but deploy was a, a, a real problem. And so right now, it's really easy to do and create a very good um, um, application and deploy it. So I finish on that. Uh, I know there is a lot of content and some uh, quite inter interesting example. And maybe we could have a, a conversation or a short time for question. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, very much, Alexandre. Uh, so for everybody, uh, you can reach Alexandre also via the private chat. Um, so there's not a lot of time for questions. So if you have any questions, you can always try to reach out uh, to him uh, later on as well. And if your qu questions won't be answered, then they will be answered afterwards as well. Uh, very impressive, nice presentation, Alexander. Um, so could you elaborate a little bit on, uh, let's say, how many of these tools are actually used on projects and do you track on value and how do you get it to the users? Are you marketing it? Are you training people on projects? How does that work? Wow, this is my old job. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, <laughs> this is the, the, the question I have uh, every day at the breakfast, like, yeah, I will do that. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, um, we spend a, a lot of time with the uh, different uh, engineering team because Vinci is a really big company. And when you uh, look everywhere, everywhere, there is a uh, use case and uh, a lot of people uh, uh, working on, uh, new stuff, new applications. So it's a really uh, rich environment. And so um, uh, now mainly I have to say that uh, it's not because of you guys, you are here in front of me, but uh, we try to um, uh, aggregate uh, all the project around Victor uh, because it's uh, really easy to deploy for uh, the different uh, uh, user. And so the process always start by uh, a good, uh, a good, uh, a good ID, and most of the time, the good ID are on a construction site. So we spend yeah. a lot of time to discuss with uh, with the guy on site uh, to try to find new use case. And when we have a new use case, yeah, we spend time to explore, to details, uh, to prototype. And when we we have the, the use case, which is a, a good prototype, then we start to do the deployment and the industrialization. So uh, it's a lot of energy uh, to do this, to, to find the new use cases and to make them uh, industrialized and working for everyone. And so uh, Victor helps a lot about that, definitely. Cool. Well, that's great to hear. <laughs> of course, thanks, uh, Alexander, for your time uh, and contribution uh, to the U-Code. It was a very nice talk. Um, let's stay in touch later. And if you'd like to stay uh, there is one uh, presentation more uh, from Marina Villanueva Diaz from Jacobs, who will be here in a, in a second. Sure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.